G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday evening here in Australia, market down again, so we got up to 2.7 trillion uh, and then we've had a bit of a rejection from there, so now we're down to 2.6 trillion dollars. And we'll have a look at the charts shortly and I'll give you my thoughts on where we're going, but I'm going to have a look at what's happening uh, in the market first of all, then we'll do the news stories and I'll go to the chart stuff last. So something a little bit different, but you know, hopefully you'll stick with me anyway. All right, so again, Bitcoin dominance dropping ever so slightly, just, you know, a, a very minor amount. Now there's a bit of volume here at the moment, but obviously it's getting ready for Monday morning uh, trading time over in the States, which is generally sort of Monday night here in Australia. Bitcoin price again, though, has been rejected. So now we're under $58,000 and gas prices still sitting sort of around the same. They've been around sort of the, you know, you might get down to $8 or $7 and then it might get up to about $11 or $12, kind of ranging. But what we can see is, again, the market is down 2.6% overall, so it's a bit of red. Nothing kind of too crazy, like not a bloodbath. But again, when we get to the charts, I'm seeing something very, very interesting. But again, we'll get to that at the end. So, all right, again, some things will do well, even when a market's going down and vice versa. When a market's going up, other things won't be doing so well. So what's been our best mover in the last 24 hours in the top 100? There we go, Elrond uh, pumping nicely. Look, Voyager has been doing quite nice for a couple of weeks now. Another coin that I was just about ready to give up on and for whatever reason held and uh, doing quite nicely now. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see where it goes from here, but at least it's starting to move, which is very, very nice. 15% move, nearly 20% move from Elrond Flow 13. Uh, iota 12 and a half sort of nearly 13 percent as well so we definitely got some nice movers in there a couple of double digits and some nice single digits as well and as i always say any gains a good gain we'll take it any day over a loss but the market is down basically sort of 2.6 percent so what hasn't performed as well then in the last 24 hours all right gala arweave uh, and cardena again these are all coins that were pumping over the last probably week or two and immutable x in the last couple of days and this is what happens coins that pump look even waxes down and i'm sure you'll find sandboxes down a little bit these coins that just pump so hard earlier are eventually going to have a cool off now tomorrow they could be well back in the green we'll have to wait and see but at the moment they are having a bit of a cool off so again if you like these coins and you kind of felt like you'd miss them Keep an eye on the charts. Maybe over the next kind of couple of days or week or so, they might come down. You just got to go back to the charts and find some old resistance levels, and they're probably going to be a pretty good indication. And not where it's just one uh, resistance level and nothing else. A bit of sort of confluence, a place where a couple of times it's been resistance, and that's probably where you're going to find some more support if you're wanting to, you know, get into some chart analysis and things like that. But look, Gala got hit pretty hard, nearly 20%. Are we 13%, Kadena 10%, but again, these coins, you know, the couple of days prior and definitely the week or two prior for Kadena anyway, I mean, it was just on fire. It was pumping really, really hard. So we're all kind of waiting to see what's going to happen Monday morning, stateside time, to see what happens with the markets. So what we'll do is have a look at the couple of stories that I thought were very, very interesting. So El Salvador are going to create a Bitcoin city and they're going to use $500 million of a planned $1 billion bond offering to buy more crypto. They're going to buy more Bitcoin. This is a very, very interesting story. Uh, you can find it on any of the news outlets if you want to go and have a read, but I'll kind of break it down into its smaller bits. So Bitcoin City, that's going to be its name, will be located along the Gulf of Francesca. Hopefully I said that right, I probably butchered it. And it's going to be near a volcano. Now, that's a bit scary in itself, but there's a reason for it. The government plans on locating a power plant by the volcano to provide energy for both the city and Bitcoin mining. Now, the city will be laid out in a circle like a coin, and in the city center will be a plaza that will be host to a huge Bitcoin symbol. The city will have no income property, capital gains, or payroll taxes. So there's going to be taxes for some things, but none of the above. So that makes it a very, very interesting place. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be free. It just doesn't work like that. Trust me, they will get you, uh, not get you, but they're going to make their money somewhere. It's not simply going to be a free city for everyone to go live. 
but they will have Bitcoin uh, at the very heart of it. So I love this idea. Now, 500 million, because they're doing $1 billion worth of uh, bonds. 500 million, will, 500 million will be used to help construct needed energy and Bitcoin mining infrastructure. So that's how they plan on getting their money back right there. And also $500 million, again, is going to buy even more Bitcoin. And, you know, maybe they get in at a bit, you know, in the $50,000 range, you know, in 10 years time. I mean, who knows how much that Bitcoin would could be worth. Now, this is where they kind of break it down. So the one billion in tokenized bonds, that will be a 10 year US dollar denominated bond. And it's going to pay 6.5% initially. Now, following a lockup period of five years, El Salvador will start to sell its cryptocurrency. Now, they're not going to sell all of it. They're just going to sell some of it and holdings to pay an added dividend to the bondholders. So by the time the 10 years have elapsed, the annual yield, sorry, the annual percentage yield will be 146%. So I get the feeling like these bonds are gonna sell fairly quickly. There's gonna be people, be people that get all over them, companies and stuff mainly, but this is very, very interesting, a legit Bitcoin city, and I couldn't think of a better place for it to be than El Salvador, in all fairness. They're the first country to come out and legalize Bitcoin as legal tender. I love this. Again, I think they'll make the one billion easy and some. I think they could probably get even more. Uh, the only thing that worries me, again, is that they're building it near a volcano. I mean, if the volcano ever erupts, then, you know, a bit of a worry. But look, there's plenty of cities that are near volcanoes, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to blow up and all the rest of it. But hey, I love what El Salvador is doing. I really hope this, you know, goes well and, you know, just gives us an idea of what the future may be able to be like, you know, whether we can have cities that completely run, you know, separate from the US dollar, you know, or any kind of dollar and, and are basically just using Bitcoin. It will really show us whether Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin at the moment, it is a, a store of wealth, you know, it's, it's where you put stuff to make more money. It's not necessarily something, at least at the moment, that people are really, you know, doing day-to-day -day transaction with. This might show us whether it can be done. But still, I think most people are gonna hold on to their Bitcoin. I'm sure they will have to have some other way of making payments. It won't be simply, excuse me, just Bitcoin, because I don't think people are gonna wanna spend the Bitcoin, except for, you know, maybe on certain items and at certain, excuse me, times when they think it's near the top of a cycle. But very, very interesting. I love what they're doing. All right. Australia's largest bank sees bigger risks in not participating in crypto. So the Commonwealth Bank, they they were pretty anti-crypto. I can tell you from personal experience, they made it really hard to transfer money into uh cryptocurrency exchanges and it was equally as hard to try and take the money out and put it back in your bank. They have changed their tune and they changed their tune quite some time ago now, like it was about a year ago, which is good and everyone has to go through that phase. Like even I did, I was very anti-crypto when I first heard about it. My friend told me about it and I just thought this is the biggest load of garbage and rubbish and again, like everybody, then you go down the rabbit hole and you got to start looking at it. And once you do, you're generally sold. Now, not everybody's going to be sold. Some people are just set in their ways and it's generally going to be older people that are going to find it harder to transition across. Now, again, I don't like to generalize, but that's the way it is. Even I'm a little bit older. And so it took me a little bit of getting used to, whereas young people, they just jump on, you know, whatever's sort of in front of them. So very, very interesting and that they have now come out and said they see the bigger risk is not participating in it as opposed to participating in it. So they said here, we see risks in participating, but we see bigger risks in not participating. And again, absolutely, there's lots of cryptos out there at the moment, over 10,000. There might be 100 or 200, if you're lucky, that are actually any good. And then there's going to be a couple of big winners in those, you know what I mean? And then there'll be lots of other ones, exactly like the stocks, you know? The S&P 500, out of the 500, there's five really big stocks, you know, something like that. And then all the rest are just really kind of small and hardly doing anything. Doesn't mean it's not money to be made in them, but they just, they aren't the big stocks. I really believe crypto will be the same, but I really like that Commonwealth Bank have changed their tune uh, and they are getting on board. And this is just a further demonstration of where we're going. Like all the big banks are now starting to 
come across governments are starting to come across and eventually it really will be that worldwide adoption now whether we're in this super cycle that's really hard to know look i'd love to say yes but i just the truth is i don't know and yeah it's you know it's one of those things hindsight will be what tells us whether we are or we aren't and then it will be whether we were (laughs) in the past tense all right moving on Senator Loomis slams Hillary Clinton and advocates for stabilizing the US dollar using Bitcoin. Look, I think all currencies are going to do this, in all fairness. You're not going to have one uh, dollar for everywhere. They're just countries aren't ready to do that just yet. And they are all going to eventually stabilize their dollar from inflation and all the rest of it using Bitcoin because they'll be able to print more um Dollars, but the dollar will still hold its value because Bitcoin should be going up, and that is really how they will help stabilize it. It won't last forever, you can still, you know, eventually print too many dollars. But if you've got it backed by things, and it's not just going to be Bitcoin, but backed by Bitcoin, backed by gold, backed by property, you know, backed by things that are just hard assets, that's how you can stabilize a dollar and not inflate it basically to infinity and basically destroy all of its purchasing power because that is what's happening to the dollar at the moment and most countries dollar you know like australia we're still sort of backed by the us dollar we still use the us dollar just not day to day here but our money is tied up in us treasury bonds and all sorts of things like that so if the us dollar fails it really means a lot of the other countries monies will fail so We need this to happen for the USA, so it then stabilizes our own dollars as well. But I do see basically all other countries eventually adopting Bitcoin, and they will use it again because the Bitcoin price most likely will continue to go up, and as it goes up, then they will be able to print more dollars and without, again, destroying it. But that's not to say they can't destroy it, but that is really where I see things going in the future, I think. The dollars around the world will be backed by Bitcoin and maybe eventually they become sats. You know, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, Senator Loomis, it's good to see that there are some, you know, politicians out there that actually understand where things are going and they're willing to get on the front foot. Now, a lot of them are kind of forced into it. You know, politicians will simply jump on something because another politician hasn't. They don't actually know anything about it and probably don't really like it. It's just simply because the other one isn't doing it. But I get the feeling like Senator Loomis is one of those kind of smart politicians. I mean, most of them are pretty smart, but the smart ones that really has delved into it a little bit and isn't simply getting on the back of it, you know, to try and push, you know, their own agenda forwards without understanding what it is. But time will tell. Right, this has really been all over Twitter. This has been the big thing at the moment. So Three Arrows Capital CEO has now backtracked on his Ethereum abandonment comments. So it was this big long thread and you can go to Twitter and find it, but it started off like this. Yes, I've abandoned Ethereum despite supporting it in the past. Yes, Ethereum has ban- abandoned its users despite supporting them in the past. The idea of sitting around jerking off watching the burn and concocting purity tests while zero newcomers can afford the chain is gross. And look, I 100% agree with this. ETH 2.0 is taking way too long. The prices on Ethereum are just ridiculous i mean hundreds of dollars at times depending on what you want to do now it's all good that the layer twos work well like um you know polygon we're going to talk about a story in them very very shortly it's the the l1 that we need to hurry up and scale you know i really am worried about ethereum that you know eth 2.0 just takes too long you know originally it was supposed to be you know years ago and now it was supposed to be about december and now it's not december it's coming in june and all these other platforms are just taking off solana avalanche you know still waiting on cardano as well to kind of see what happens they've made a whole lot of promises they don't have a dex yet that's really what's holding them back but yeah times are troubling but he has scaled back uh on what he said a little bit no he's not you know completely said he's wrong he's just said want to soften this and say abandon is the wrong word was heat of the moment and he's sorry and i would agree you know i think that's exactly what it was just heat of the moment he's frustrated like everybody else there are great teams working on scaling eth on l2 Would have preferred to see ETH1 roadmap. Also would have preferred focusing on users rather than holders' welfare in upgrades. Again, here, ETH, it's the ETH 
base layer that we really need to get get sorted because that's just you know ethereum is the core of it and so you know you can't have a slow l1 and super fast uh, l2s and think that that will work forever it won't we need ethereum layer one to hurry up and scale because that will then eventually make ethereum layer twos even faster again because polygon i think it's about four cents per transaction solana it's about one cent per transaction so you know there's still some work to go for ethereum and it's things like that that has me slightly worried but moving on all right australian senator says DeFi is not going anywhere anytime soon 100% 100% agree, it's not going anywhere. It is the future, it's the only way to make yield and money at the moment. The old system is broken and does not work. So Senator Jane, Senator, sorry, Jane Hume has stated that decentralized finance presents huge opportunities for Australia to cement its place as a front runner for innovation and economic progress. 100% agree, I want, you know, Australia is, which is good, but I really want them to get right on the front foot of blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies and things like that. I think it would really help, you know, push our nation, you know, to, you know, I don't know whether we're going to get in the GA, that might be a bit much, but we're in the G20, but just to make us, you know, a more successful country because we still, you know, are fairly small in the grand scheme of things. Now, the conference was primarily about super, so that's superannuation here in Australia, 401ks in the States, and government retirement funds. They are coming to not just cryptocurrencies, but DeFi. This, this is telling you about it. This was where, what it was all about, and the senator is bringing it up because they're all trying to find ways to make more yield and all the rest of it. And I don't know what it's like overseas, but originally our superannuation was like, I think 7% a year you had to put in. And now they've worked out that 7% isn't enough. So now they've made it 9%. And now they've worked out that 9% is not enough. And they're boosting it up to 11%. And then they're going to work out that 11% isn't enough. And it's going to keep going up. And that's because everything's based off the dollar. And the dollar is just being printed to infinity and crushed. As, hence what I said before, you know, we go back to that other story. We need the dollar to be backed by Bitcoin and things like that. So then you can keep printing it more. There's got to be, uh, you know, it's got to be an equal to the amount that Bitcoin and other things are going up. Otherwise, you just end up right back where you are. And unfortunately, that's most likely what will happen uh, with the dollar is they will always just continue to print too much. But DeFi is a way of helping that out. So it says here, DeFi is not a fad and to tread cautiously but not fearfully because the technology is not going anywhere anytime soon. Not It's not going anywhere, period. This is the new way to make money, DeFi. It's going to be a smart contract that it's going to do it all for you. The banks are going to roll it out. They're going to charge you a fee for it, but it'll be safer for people who don't understand cryptocurrencies and computing and that, i.e. the older generation, the newer generations, they won't use banks. They really won't. They will simply be using these algorithms and, you know, banks will basically be exchanges uh, and your wallets, you know, MetaMasks and things like that. That will be a new bank. DeFi will be built in. You know, Jack Dorsey is coming out with his Bitcoin decks, you name it, banks they really are in trouble. I don't think they will be here in another 50 years time. They will really have to innovate to be here because yes, they will still capture the old boomers and some of the people uh, in my generation, you know, Gen Z, Gen Xs and things like that. But the millennials, not a chance. They will, they won't have anything to do with banks. They just won't need to. There's, it's going to be on their phone that will do it all. So interesting times and this is where things going and i love that australian senators are getting on the front foot and you know trying to push australia and i'm australian so i want us to do well trying to push us to the forefront of this new technology because this really is it will it's a defining moment it doesn't seem like it's so much now but and again this is never financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but I just think those who are in cryptocurrencies now and you know do their research and get onto the good ones, if they continue to invest dollar cost average and all the rest of it, you know highs, lows, or if you can time the market, sweet, whatever. In ten to fifteen years time, if you have put in reasonable amounts and again into the good projects, the ones that last, you're going to be 
unbelievably wealthy is what I believe unbelievably wealthy but you know time will tell that story we'll, we'll have to wait and see all right polygon has proposed uni integration so this is what uniswap needs they <laughs> they have been struggling they still get a lot of volume but it's only from the big players like the small players cannot use uniswap they're just it's impossible you know a hundred bucks 200 bucks to swap it's just out of this world and I, I don't use it at all like at all it's just way too expensive i think them getting on polygon would be a wise idea because Aave is already there curves already there and again four cent transactions like yeah one cent transactions would be better like solana but I'm ha I'm I'm all right with a four cent transaction. <laughs> like that is still, you know, again cents to the dollar. I don't have a problem with that. And eventually, I do think those fees will come down once Ethereum Layer One scales. I just get the feeling like that will make Ethereum Layer Two uh, even cheaper as well. But again, we'll have to wait and see. But I really do think this would be best for Uni. They need to hurry up and get onto. Yeah, some kind of layer two because they're just they're starting to lag behind like anything that's on l1 and ethereum it, all those kind of things are really struggling all right now this is from invest answers i really like his channel this is one of the few channels that i do watch and i just like his stuff and he's put in this chart saying you know it looks like 55k may be the max uh pain floor Oh, I'm not so sure and I'll get into my reason why and one of the reasons why is because this is what everyone's expecting you know plan B I, I, I love this guy's charts and I'm not saying he's wrong I just get the feeling it will be made wrong by big players <laughs> just they're not going to want it to happen like this so you know we're currently at about what $57,000 can we get Bitcoin to $98,000 in the next sort of nine days i don't know i'm not saying it can't do it if it's literally a repeat of 2017 then yes it will i'm just not sure it's going to play out that way now i want to show you why finally we'll get to the bitcoin chart what i'm seeing is we had this bounce here and everyone was like yep but look where the high was we set in sorry and i'm going to zoom in we set in a lower high we didn't actually create a higher high and now it's rolled over now again it's eight o'clock in the morning or nearly ready to go nine o'clock in the morning i'm not sure what time the market's over in the open in the states so we you know a lot of people are probably hoping that the market opens and this really starts to fire up i'm just not so sure lower high lower high lower high i get the feeling like this may be rolling over and look, what I'm most concerned about is that we're about to see something not quite like this, but somewhat similar to this. So this will be a double top. Now, I don't think it's a double top that we go into a bear market, but maybe this is the new bear market. That's just something that I'm, I'm still not sure of. This could be it. Again, that it may be last April all the way through to sort of July. So April, May, June, July, you know, four, five, six months of downward pressure before you start to see something come up now i don't think we're going to see something exactly like this but what i am looking for is that maybe bitcoin is definitely pushing down to sort of 53 ish thousand again maybe even more sort of down here to the forty eight thousand dollar level because there's probably a lot of people starting to go long at the moment it's the leverage that they're going to want to shake out and burn people so like i said i have my uh buy orders in place for it continues to go down and look if i'm wrong and bitcoin does start to fire up brilliant awesome uh, i'm stoked i've got my bags packed and i'm sort of ready for it but i have that cash on the side ready to continue to buy if bitcoin goes down because i would rather buy it while it's going down than buy it while it's at all-time highs and it's not at all-time highs it's ten thousand plus dollars under its all-time high at the moment and if it continues to go down then i'm happily happy to keep scaling into it now again a lot of people talk about catching you know uh, uh catching the knife and all that look that may be the case but i'm not getting every single bit of cash i have and going right here i'm buying at fifty-three thousand, and then hoping that that's as low as it goes i'm just going to scale into it slowly but surely until i feel like we find a bottoming formation and then i will start to deploy more cash 
but I don't know, and I just I'm not Nostradamus, and I don't know anyone who is who can perfectly predict these things. Now, Plan B has been pretty good so far, but we're going to have to wait and see whether that's going to be correct. So again, I mean, the market I think would open around about sort of nine ten o'clock if it didn't open at eight o'clock. So we will know within the next hour or two really of what direction the market's going. It could be just sideways, but really it should either be going up. And fairly quickly, if Plan B thing's going to play out, or I think it's going to start to tread water over the next week, because again, we're getting to the end of the month, so there's uh, expiries and options and all sorts of things going on. So I get the feeling like we might get that over this week, push down, and Bitcoin maybe start to come down and test some kind of 52, 53, again, maybe even some 49, 48 thousand dollar levels again. Too many people are expecting what Plan B uh, is expecting, and I just get the feeling like that's why it won't happen. Not that it shouldn't happen, or it, or it couldn't happen, just that I don't think the big players will exactly allow it. Don't get me wrong, I think we get to 88,000, I think we get to you know the half a million and the million dollars eventually, but it's just going to be... Yeah, again, the really big players trying to shake out as many people as they can, and, you know, it, it will be. It'll be the diamond hands. Those people with diamond hands and all the rest of it, that will make the big money. And, you know, if you can somewhat time the market, like I said, you don't have to buy the exact bottom. You can be just about thereabouts and you don't have to sell the exact top. you just got to be sort of thereabouts. All the money will be made in the middle and it can be massive amounts of money. So, again, for me, I don't care if I didn't sell the exact top, 69000 That's all right. I'm buying at 59,000 or 57,000. And if it goes down to 52, I'm buying. If it goes down to, what do we got? 44, I'm buying. And I'll just keep buying because I'd rather buy it at lows. And I don't care about some people say, oh, but why don't you just wait till it goes up? Because I don't know when it's going to go up. And I don't know if it comes down to 40, 52,000, starts to come up, and you throw all your money in thinking that's the bottom and it's in. And then no, it doesn't and continues to go way down like this. That is the truth. I can't predict exactly what's going to happen. All I know is when it's going down, that's when I would rather buy it. I'll keep the majority of my cash on the side, waiting to see some kind of bottom formation pattern. And again, I don't have to pick it exactly, just got to be thereabouts. Because then when it does start to go up, every time it gets back to these levels that I bought at, it'll be exponential because of the other ones that I bought from lower and it just really starts to crank up. That is how it works. Now, if you can time the market and buy the bottom and sell the top, please send me a DM. I would love to know uh, and you show me some proof that you did it because I don't know anyone who's been able to do that. Now, last but not least, Ethereum, I'm seeing something similar as well. We're in this big kind of upwards trend and we set a high, set a lower high, set a lower high. We pushed up a bit, but now it's rolled over again. So for me, I'm really waiting to see if Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Ethereum's going to come down to $4,000. And really, I get the feeling like there's a definite chance it could come down to $3,500. Thereabouts, and again, over the next sort of week, getting towards the end of the month, I think it's quite likely that Plan B's 98000 probably happens in December, maybe January. It gets pushed back a little bit. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. I would love to be wrong. But I'd also like to be right because I'd like to buy everything cheaper. Don't get me wrong. But if if I'm wrong in the sense that it's not going down and it is going to follow Plan B's uh, charts, wicked. Again, my bags are packed and I'm ready to go. And yeah, it, it'll be great times. But if it's not, i got cheddar on the side and I'm ready to buy those dips. And I don't mind buying it down to whatever price it finally gets to at the bottom. And then... Again, I'll still be buying it back on the way back up as well, all the way until it gets to brand new all-time highs. And again, every time it gets to a, a, a mark that I bought some at, it'll be exponential because of all the other Bitcoin that I bought below it and then the other Bitcoin that I bought slightly above it as well. I, I hope that's making sense and you can understand what I'm talking about. All right, I'll let you go on that note. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but if you are, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market, and I'll see you next time.